is a historic announcement that was just made by Governor Gavin Newsom. In an exclusive interview with the Today Show this morning, Newsom says he wants to propose a new 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. June 2023, it was decided to end all firearm violence across the U.S. Every time, it's the same. They tell us we can't stop these massacres. They tell us we have to stand by and watch tragedy after tragedy unfold in our communities. It would affect the entire country when it comes to gun control. If passed, it would restrict access to guns in all 50 states. The seriousness of authorities was made crystal clear as a gun ban was proposed in all 50 states. How did this all happen? Let's find out. Governor Gavin Newsom created waves when he revealed his groundbreaking plans during an exclusive interview on the Today Show. In his appearance, he shared his vision of introducing a transformative 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, aiming to impact gun control measures throughout the nation profoundly. Should this proposed amendment gain approval, it would impose a gun ban in all 50 states. Governor Newsom believes that despite the recurrent nature of these tragic events, we must not accept the notion that we are powerless to prevent them. He aims to address the issue of domestic terrorism by introducing this amendment, keeping in mind that California already has numerous gun laws in place, despite experiencing the highest number of mass shootings in the United States from 1982 to 2023. It is important to note that Governor Newsom's proposal seeks to implement on a national level what has not fully worked on a state level. It is comparable to someone suggesting a particular weight loss eating regimen while disregarding individual differences and circumstances. Governor Newsom's approach aims to respect the Second Amendment while striving to prevent domestic terrorism, although some argue that it may infringe upon personal freedoms. Contrary to the notion that only by compromising the Second Amendment can we effectively combat domestic terrorism, there are alternative viewpoints. Some believe that we can challenge this narrative without sacrificing fundamental rights. Critics argue that taking away the most popular firearm used for self-defense, which is involved in less than 1% of gun deaths, does not align with the goal of reclaiming freedom from fear. Instead, they perceive it as an expression of apprehension towards law-abiding citizens who possess firearms and cannot be easily coerced by an overreaching government. The ability to shape a more perfect union is ingrained in the Constitution. However, detractors argue that enhancing unity by depriving people of their basic rights is counterproductive. They find it paradoxical that a privileged political figure constantly protected by armed security would prohibit a single parent in Chicago's South Side from owning an AR-15 for home defense or deny a disabled person living alone the right to possess a pistol-caliber carbine for self-defense. Such policies, they contend, contribute to further division and elitism. Acknowledging diverse perspectives on this issue is essential as each viewpoint contributes to a comprehensive understanding of the complexity surrounding gun control and personal freedoms. We propose the 28th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which aims to make four permanent additions to the country's laws. The proposed amendment includes raising the minimum age for firearm purchases from 18 to 21. If one cannot buy alcohol, one should not be able to buy a gun. Let's draw a parallel between purchasing alcohol and a constitutional right, especially considering the historical context of the 18th Amendment. This amendment aimed to prohibit alcohol in the United States is notable for being the only amendment ever repealed. It's worth considering that 18-year-olds are already given significant responsibilities like paying taxes, voting, serving in the military, making legal agreements, and being seen as independent individuals. Given these factors, Governor Gavin Newsom's viewpoint suggests that an 18-year-old who lives alone should not be allowed a firearm for personal protection. The proposed amendment calls for universal background checks to prevent individuals with a high potential for causing harm from obtaining guns for criminal purposes. However, California, a state that already has universal background checks, has witnessed the country's highest number of mass shootings. Furthermore, statistics indicate that between 1966 and 2019, 77% of mass shooters obtained their weapons legally even after undergoing background checks. These findings suggest that universal background checks may not be as effective as proponents claim. A perceived flaw in universal background checks by arguing that they could serve as a means to establish a national gun registration system, which in the past has resulted in confiscating firearms from the general public. The proposed amendment also introduces reasonable waiting periods for all gun purchases. 
The heartbreaking story of Carol Bowen, who had a restraining order and security cameras in place, wasn't able to save her life from a violent ex-boyfriend who fatally stabbed her. Carol believed that the only way to protect herself was with a gun, but she was still waiting for her permit to be approved even after the 30-day waiting period mandated by New Jersey's gun laws had passed. This raises the question of whether the state's gun laws played a role in Carol's death, emphasizing the urgency and necessity for self-defense in such situations. Lastly, the proposed amendment prohibits civilians from purchasing assault rifles, categorized as weapons of war. It's perplexing that such weapons were not anticipated by the country's founding fathers when drafting the Constitution. The founding fathers demonstrated remarkable foresight when they drafted the Constitution, the oldest and longest standing codified national constitution currently in effect worldwide. However, they couldn't have anticipated that their rifles, wielded during the fight for the country's independence, would fail to keep pace with technological advancements over the next two centuries. It is advisable to be wary of politicians who refer to citizens as civilians rather than as fellow citizens, as this term implies a dismissive attitude and suggests an unequal relationship. Such politicians may view themselves as rulers rather than public servants working for the people. The proposed 28th Amendment aims to grant states the authority to implement reasonable and sensible gun safety laws while upholding the principles of the Second Amendment and respecting America's tradition of gun ownership. It seeks to solidify the common-sense constitutional protections that receive overwhelming support from Democrats, Republicans, independents, and gun owners alike. It is important to note that the Second Amendment is not merely a tradition but a right. Referring to it as a tradition disregards the Founding Fathers' intentions who included the Second Amendment in the Bill of Rights to safeguard the people's ability to bear arms, fully aware that future government actors might attempt to curtail this right. Consequently, the government is explicitly restrained from infringing upon the people's right to keep and bear arms. The 28th Amendment appears to be a circumvention of the Second Amendment, reflecting a sophomoric approach to addressing the issue. As part of the Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment guarantees individual civil rights and liberties, including their right to bear arms. The Bill of Rights was specifically crafted to constrain the government and outline its limitations. Therefore, the 28th Amendment, contrary to its stated purpose, contradicts this fundamental principle. Moreover, if the support for these laws is as substantial as indicated by the presented statistics, it would be reasonable to expect that these laws should have already been enacted through federal legislation. Background checks, raising the minimum age, implementing waiting periods, and banning so-called assault weapons enjoy considerable public support, as reflected by 87, 81, 77, and 61 percent respectively. Consequently, the need for an entirely new amendment rather than passing federal laws appears perplexing given the level of public backing for these measures. When considering the general public sentiments towards these laws, it is pertinent to acknowledge that the statistics presented are based on a Fox News poll. The poll involved around 900 individuals who were contacted via telephone using random digit dialing. It is important, however, to recognize the limitations of such a sample size in relation to the overall population, which exceeds 300 million. Therefore, it would be prudent to exercise caution in drawing definitive conclusions about the country's overall opinion based solely on these findings. It is worth emphasizing that the discussion surrounding guns in the Second Amendment is rooted in a belief in common sense. Proponents of gun rights argue that in a world where individuals with malicious intent pose a threat to law-abiding citizens, it is only logical for the latter to have access to effective means of self-protection. They believe that rules that make it more difficult for people to defend themselves and put tougher limitations on who can own firearms are not reasonable. This perspective results from a desire to enable law-abiding persons to protect their own lives and those close to them. Advocates contend that prudent gun ownership can improve personal security with appropriate training and obedience to the law. Instead of placing further limitations on law-abiding persons, they argue that combating the causes of violence and supporting mental health efforts would be a more successful strategy for avoiding crime. Newsom's determination is rooted in his deep concern regarding the erosion of state-level gun control laws by federal courts. The proposed amendment encompasses several crucial measures, such as increasing the minimum age for purchasing firearms to 21, implementing universal background checks, establishing waiting periods for gun transactions, and prohibiting the sale of assault rifles to civilians. Ultimately, three-quarters of states must vote for the amendment to be enacted. 
Although this undertaking poses challenges, particularly due to the Republican majority in more than half of state legislatures, Newsom remains resolute in his beliefs in the importance of directly addressing this pressing issue. Subscribe to the channel for more blues from the world of firearms. Guns should transcend political divisions, and we kindly ask for your support in amplifying our message through YouTube. Your participation can contribute to a constructive dialogue in this sensitive topic, fostering understanding and empathy. Click on the links popping up on your screen to find out what is next after this ban. See you in the next one.